Hello my loyal companions, welcome back to the channel and to another complete rogue guide. Today we're going to be having a look at one of my favourite rogues, Lancer. In this video we're going to be breaking down her basic kit, explaining everything from her abilities, weapons and perks. Then I'm going to give you some upgrade priorities so you know exactly what to buy when you're in game. And then I'm going to give you some playstyle tips to help you play her more effectively. If you do go on to enjoy or learn something new, make sure you drop a like and subscribe to the channel. But for now, let's get into it. Lancer is labelled as a duelist and this perfectly describes her. She's built for 1v1s, built for flanking and trying to disrupt the enemy team from the backline. Her kit is completely designed around this 1v1 focus, enabling her to move from target to target, trying to take down as many as she can from a great flanking position. She's able to do this because of her great passive and abilities that we're going to get into now. Her passive is called Elusive, and what this gives her the ability to do is to roll reload. So every time she rolls, she reloads her currently held weapon. This is so strong within the game. Whatever weapon she picks up, she's able to roll and reload all the ammunition back into it, meaning instead of having to take the time to reload, you just roll, which is an evasive maneuver in itself, and then you can begin shooting again. So you get into this pattern of shooting one person, rolling, shooting another person, rolling, shooting another person, and she can build up on this snowball effect from having constant ammo. This ties in nicely as well with her main ability, which is called Quick and Quiet. And what this does is when she activates it, she moves it with increased speed and with uh, silenced footsteps as she runs around. This will stop at any point by her either shooting or using some form of gadget, or will just run the duration of the time. This is a great ability and really enables her to do the flanks, getting in the position to 1v1 and disrupt the backline, as I've been saying, and then she can use that roll reload to help move from target to target when she's in that backline. She's just fantastic at this flank, but you need to be really careful about how you time it, and we'll get into some of that in the playstyle tips. Going then into her weapons, her first primary weapon is the 24S, which is a submachine gun. This is a lightweight submachine gun, really fitting to her playstyle. As you upgrade it, you increase its hipfire accuracy, you increase its damage range at tier 2, and at tier 3, increase its magazine size from 24 to 34. This has quite a low amount of bullets base, but that does not really matter because you have the roll reload to constantly refill it. This is a great up close SMG, but can do some damage at range um, if you're able to control the little bit of recoil that it does have. Her second primary weapon is the Striker 8x10 and this is a ruthless automatic shotgun that does massive damage when you're up in somebody's face, but if you're missing any of the pellets or if you're trying to shoot a range it is a bit lackluster in that regard. As you upgrade it to tier 1 you increase its damage range ever so slightly but very unimpactfully, at tier 2 you increase its hipfire accuracy and at tier 3 you increase its magazine size from the base 8 to 12. The preferred weapon here for me is the 24S, the SMG is just better overall, it can combat at some mid ranges where the shotgun cannot and it's just a bit more viable and versatile for different situations on the map. You're really not going to get outgunned with the 24S if you're a good lancer and hitting headshots, um, so the shotgun isn't really that useful, although it can be fun in certain game modes such as strikeout. Going then onto the second drew weapon, her pistol is the Spitfire. This is uh, the automatic pistol similar to Shark. As you upgrade it at tier 1, you increase the magazine size from 15 to 20, which is a very nice upgrade. Uh, and at tier 2, you suppress its fire and reduce its reticle bloom. Lancer doesn't generally have to rely on this because it's actually longer to switch weapons and start shooting with this than it is to do the roll reload with the SMG. Her other secondary weapon is the melee weapon, the throwing axe, which as we talked about is the faster throwing thrown weapon. And as you upgrade it to tier 1, you increase that throw speed even further. And then you increase the throw damage from 100 to 150 at tier 2. Lancer's gadgets also really enable her kit. She has the smoke grenade which allows her to block off long lines of sight from longer range rogues such as Phantom and then push through the smoke using her quick and quiet ability. As you upgrade the smoke grenade at tier 1, you increase the smoke duration, also slow enemies within it, and then at tier 2, you are able to get a second gadget. Her other gadget is the Semtex grenade, which works well. It's a very fast acting explosive device, which suits her playstyle of moving quickly and does great damage if you're able to stick someone. And because you're coming from the flank, normally you are able to get a good stick off uh, and maybe bounce them into enemies, so you get multiple damages. As you upgrade this to tier 1, you increase the throw speed of it and then you increase the uh, stick damage to 250. And then at tier 2, you increase the explosion radius. My personal recommendation is that you find the time to get both of these within game. They are really good um, with her kit and really enable her to do different things, but above both very useful. Going then onto her perks, in the 4000 category she has padded steps which silences her footsteps, obviously very good for Lancer when she doesn't have her ability up. Then also in the 4000 she has shred arounds, in 6500 she has stalker and helping hand, and then in 10,000 she has tracker rounds and life drain. 
I think Pallet Steps is a really good option uh, as well as Life Drain. The other ones aren't as useful, um, but those two really work well with her. Moving from target to target with Life Drain is great. And using the Silence Footsteps when you're walking or crouching, either before you've used your ability or after you've used your ability and you're behind enemy lines, is a great option as well. Let's go then into her upgrade priority of how I would recommend doing it. As usual, you have your high priority, which things you really should buy, your interchangeable, which you should get, but you can sort of mess with the order, and then the low priority of situationals, which I wouldn't recommend getting except for very specific circumstances. And then obviously I have the rounds that you're most likely to get these are accompanying it on the left. In round one, I would recommend you definitely either pick up the Smoke Grenade or Semtex. Generally for me, this depends on what side of the map you're on. If you're attacking and there are long lines of sight you need to push through, I'd recommend getting the Smoke Grenade every time. However, if you think it's a short map or you're on defense, so you're not really using the smoke, they're not as useful, then I'd recommend the Semtex by itself. As you move into round two, I'd recommend getting the SMG. I think this is just the preferred weapon overall. Then you should be looking at getting with the other gadget. Both are really good to have because they both enable her kit in different ways. Of course, you can get the axe, which is optional if you're good with it, although you don't really need it on Lancer because she's so close range, so up in your face, the axe isn't as useful all the time, but for clutch situations, perhaps it can be. It just depends on your personal preference and how you see the game going. You then, I think, want to be focusing on your weapon upgrades. Getting them for both weapons is really good, but similar to how I talked about with another rogue, you want to be spending any money you have on those weapon upgrades until you get a bulk 10,000 one round, in which case you may as well invest it in life drain then, and then start getting the other weapon upgrades afterwards. Then you want to look at upgrading your smoke grenade and getting padded steps. As for the other perks and gadgets and upgrades, they're not really that high priority and you won't really have enough money to buy them, but you can see the order in which I'd recommend them down there. Let's now go into some playstyle tips, and this is really where the guide is going to help you with Lancer. I've spoke about many times before how Lancer is a really good rogue for new players, but actually has an incredibly high skill cap. Lancer is so good for these newer players because she's so forgiving with that roll reload. You're never really out of ammo. She has a fantastic, really forgiving gun as well. So you're able to play around that really easily. She's great to learn. She's great to increase your movement knowledge and your positioning and your sort of thought process really well on her. But if you're an average Lancer, you're not going to be performing very well on the leaderboards at all. She's really for newer players who just kind of want to get a feel for the game and dominate like low level lobbies. Or they're for the really good players who know how to initiate a flank, who know to have good positioning, map awareness and 1v1 potential. And that's where she really shines. You have to be so patient with Lancer to use her effectively at a higher level. You can't just be going off of spawn, running into the enemy team and hoping you're going to get a 1v4. That's not how Lancer has to be played. She has to be sitting there with the team, waiting for a moment where the flank might come in most use. Sometimes that doesn't happen and sometimes you just have to stay there and fight with the team where she is less useful. But most of the time you will find an opportunity within a game to get a really good flank off. You have to wait for there to be a large commotion on the enemy team with your team to then initiate that flank. You can't just be darting in there from the start of the round. It won't work, they'll expect it. It's too obvious, especially when players start to get better. So you need to wait for the perfect timing. Lancer is also just fantastic to have on the team for the pure threat of that flank. Even if you don't flank, the threat of your flank is still there. So at the start of the round, they're gonna have to have one or two people watching for you. The reason I say it might be two people is because some, you know, you can 1v1 that person who's guarding that flank if you're using particularly the Semtex well enough to flush them out of the position you think they're most likely to be in. Another massive tip I have for you with Lancer is that you need to be so good and so confident with a few different factors within the game. This is map knowledge, so you know exactly the best pathing and routes to flank, as well as the places that the enemy team are most likely to be sitting waiting for your flank. You need to have really good positional awareness of your own teammates and the enemy, so you know where they are, where lines of sights are covered for you, and what lines of sight you might need to block off with the smoke to then push forward. And then you need to have really good gun skill. She is so dependent on you hitting those shots and mainly hitting headshots. I have a really high headshot count, I think, for the amount of kills that I have. And I think this is mostly due to the fact that I'm hitting uh, lots of headshots with this Lancer SMG and tearing through people that way. She's great 1v1 duelist, but only if you're really hitting headshots because you can get outgunned if the enemy is hitting headshots instead. Those three things meshed together make Lancer really strong. And I really recommend that you work on those things. You work on your positioning, you work on your map knowledge, you work on your gun skill so that you're a more effective Lancer. And playing Lancer in Strikeout, for example, really helps you get into the fast paced nature of this. And that leads on to my next tip, which is to play Lancer really fast paced. 
you need to be so comfortable in that adrenaline mode of going from target to target to target and really moving through the enemy team, slaying through them. Because if you hesitate, that gives them a chance to give the call out that you're there and put the attention back on you. But if you're moving from target to target to target really quickly, they're going to have less reaction time to respond to you and deal with you in the right way. You need to be putting them under pressure and that means you have to be comfortable under that pressure as well. But actually a really big tip I have for you is about how to play Lancer gun-wise and you should be aiming to hip fire as much as possible. She's really good at getting in people's faces and that's where you can use the hip fire and the close range to your advantage. You don't want to be shooting people at sort of that mid range where you might miss a few shots. You want to try and get as close to them as possible, then shoot them and if possible sort of play around corners, play around your roll reload all the time and uh, hip fire them. Your hip fire is really strong in that weapon, particularly when you get that tier two upgrade. So you do want to be playing around it and you'll see in my gameplays a lot that I'm doing this. And the last tip I have for Lancer is that you need to be using your roll reload. It is so strong, it's the strongest passive in the game, probably by quite far, and you need to be using it. It's so good. If you're sitting there and holding your reload button to reload on Lancer, you're probably doing something wrong to the point where you can even just stand in cover and roll into the cover to get that reload. The only time I think it's not very good is if you might have to roll out of cover to get that reload, in which case you might get shot. That's maybe then uh, when I would recommend you using your reload button, but otherwise just roll into the wall, roll it out of cover, roll between cover. It's such a good evasive maneuver and you get your bullets back out of it. You need to be utilizing this. The best Lancers will be utilizing this and Lancers who aren't very good will not. That is the biggest distinction that you will find at that sort of mid-level. Overall though, Lancer is just a fantastic rogue with such great flank potential. She's a great 1v1 duelist and I would definitely recommend her to anybody who wants to get seriously good at positioning within this game and want to really put the enemy team under pressure. A lot of competitive teams at the moment are struggling to deal with good Lancers because they've got that pressure, they've got that fear factor and they punish slow movement and slow reactions. Okay then guys, that takes us to the end of the video and if you did enjoy, make sure you leave a like and subscribe to the channel. You can also come follow me on twitch.tv slash Radbar Gaming to see live game commentaries, guides, Q&As, tournaments and scrims, as well as high level Lancer gameplay if that's what you're interested in. All the links you need are down in the description below, but for now guys, I hope you have a fantastic day and remember, be loyal, be brave, be relentless, and I'll catch you in the next video.